Reimagining Success, Episode 67. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five that allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now, let's get started on those dreams. Hi there, and welcome back to the podcast. Now, this week, I want to talk about not just a syndrome, but an epidemic. And this epidemic is the busyness epidemic. So this idea that every time someone says, how are you? You say, oh, I'm really busy. Now, this may be unthinking, or it may be a bit of a sort of humble brag, because it's really a mark of social status to say, oh, I'm so busy. Now, I don't think we're consciously trying to impress people. It's just an innate thing that's become very natural in our society. Oh, I'm so busy, so much work. Now, look, the reality is that, and I may have said this before, I've read studies that say we only do about two or three hours of productive work in a normal office day. And let's face it, in those two or three hours, I don't want to, um, I guess, be too critical of the amazing work you're doing. But most of us, and if you're a doctor or an ambulance um, medic, whatever they're called, or any of these wonderful things that you're doing, a nurse and so on, then you are saving lives. Most of us are not. So in our corporate jobs, we're working on PowerPoint decks, we're in strategy meetings, we're doing product launches and so on. So to say, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, unless I would say, and this is my own judgment, but cheekily say, you know, we're actually, oh, I'm so busy saving lives or working on penguins surviving, you know, in the Arctic, whatever it is, or preventing climate change. That's completely my value judgment again. Um, But unless we're doing something like that incredible, then actually, is it so impressive that you're busy? Um, Is it the most exciting, interesting thing that you want to share with people that you're busy? Again, without being um, critical of people who've retired, I'm sure we all have that retiree friend who is constantly saying, and maybe it's your parents, grandparents, whatever it is, saying, oh, I'm so busy, I've got so much work to do. And as a non-retiree who has a full-time job and children and all these hundreds of other things, it's difficult to see how someone who has literally no obligation, at least, you know, from a work perspective, which generally has taken up 40 or more hours of our week, you know, full-time job, it's very difficult to see how they can be so busy. So I can hear already in what I'm saying that I'm judging and I think we all judge each other and I want to put that aside for a moment. However, what I'd like to encourage you to do is think about what is this busyness epidemic doing for you as an individual? I know certainly for me and for many of my clients, this sort of I do, therefore I am, if I'm going to sort of bastardise the um, Descartes saying that I think, therefore I am, I do, therefore I am, is very damaging. We have this kind of achiever, hyperachiever focus of, um, and I've talked about the good girl syndrome before, of having to always be busy, always be doing things, where human doings rather than human beings is another one of those pithy kind of little expressions I've heard as well. Um, So why on earth has that happened? What is that giving us? What is the damage that's having on our health, on our relationships, and so on? So that's what I'd like to explore today with a bit of a lengthy intro there of criticising people for saying they're busy. And don't mean to um, label anyone at all, but maybe you can relate to this. And certainly I would like to come up with something more interesting to say to people than, yeah, I'm okay, or yeah, I'm really busy with work at the moment. Well, actually, I'm working on this really exciting project. I'm working on this new book. Or, oh, you know what, we're looking at where we're going to go traveling later in the year or something. I'm sure there are so many more interesting things to say in your life um, than being busy. But more importantly than what we're saying to other people is what you're doing and feeling yourself. So I want to talk you through a few aspects of this, which I think are important and hopefully will help you a little bit. Now, this is something that will take time. It's a massive shift in how we think and are. Um, But hopefully, if you listen carefully, maybe listen a couple of times, take some notes and really reflect on how you can apply this. And this can, over time, really give you a shift and really liberate you in some sense. So the first thing, and I've sort of been poking at that a little bit already, is what is this bringing you? Because it's so easy to say, get over it, but it's much harder to break a habit that's deeply ingrained for a reason. And the question is, what is that reason for you? So why is it 
that you're clinging on to always do, being busy, this addiction to checklists, ticking boxes and so on, you know, oh my gosh, you have done so much today, filling every moment of every day. I'm going to volunteer on this board. I'm going to write this book. I'm going to learn this language. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. So really having honest look on, okay, am I avoiding something difficult or painful? Is this a form of procrastination? On a very small scale, you know, every morning, it's very much easier for me to just reply to a few emails and do a bit of copywriting for my social calendar, which, yes, I do need to do. That's much easier than, say, taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture strategy or starting a new strategy of, in my case, you know, pitching media outlets, which I haven't been doing before, or, um, you know, starting a new um, exercise routine. And we'll talk about this next week in terms of how you can become more disciplined and how you can introduce new habits. All those things are harder to do than to do something that I've been doing forever and there's sort of easier list. So it's very easy to just tick things off your list. Um, is that why you're doing it? Is it just easier? So you're avoiding something that's harder. It's a form of procrastination. Is it because it's easy just to go full steam ahead rather than taking a step back and looking at what you really want? Because maybe it's really scary. Maybe you'll find you know what the things that you're working on right now aren't what you really want to do and you'll have to make lots of changes and that is uncomfortable. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to give things up. You have to work really, really hard. Are there things on your list that shouldn't even be on the list in the first place and aren't getting you to where you want to be? In which case, you know, as thrilling as it is to tick things off your list, you're not actually getting anywhere. And importantly, what happens when you're not busy? How does that feel? Is there a sense of emptiness, loneliness, unhappiness? Again, maybe it's something you're avoiding because as soon as you have a day of, oh, I'm not busy, I'm not doing loads of things, you feel like you should be busy. Maybe you're ill and actually all you need to do is rest and somehow you can't quite do that. You feel like you should be on your computer, you should be doing this, that and the other in the office, maybe you have a down day or you don't have a lot of challenges at the moment in your role and you feel like, oh, they're paying me and I really must do a good job. So I'm just going to sit here and, and shake and, and do things just, you know, busy work, which isn't actually moving ourselves forwards. So really explore, first of all, what is this busyness giving you? What is the benefit you're getting from it? Because before we let go of it, it's all, again, very easy to give you some practical tactics for moving forwards. But if you don't understand what purpose this is, filling fulfilling for you now you won't be able to replace it with something else so really explore why is this busyness this i do therefore i am something you're clinging to what are all these projects what is filling your calendar so and bringing you and what is it helping you to perhaps avoid now having said that and that is something i'd like you to spend more time reflecting on than just these couple of minutes that's taken me so either pause and have a think about it now or you know, meditate on later, have a think when you go for a run, a bath, come back to it later. But some practical tips as well. So, of course, I want you to review your to-do list and importantly question the shoulds. So it's so easy to say, I should be doing this, I should be doing that, um, and just add these things to an endless, never-ending to-do list. Now, a couple of practical tips here, really practical, detailed things. One is, and I may have talked about this before, the five whys. This is something I learned um, back in my time at Procter & Gamble, and it can be used for a whole host of things. But here I'd like you to really question, OK, I need to do X. I have to um, post every day on Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook. I have to um, do X, Y, Z. I have to volunteer on this board. I have to uh, take my daughter to whatever it is. Ask yourself the five whys. Why? do I have to do this? Why do I have to post every day on social media, okay, to be consistent and have this plan? Why, why, why? And it may be that you go, actually, no, this is a choice I'm making, in which case it's not a should, it's a, I want to do this, or it's something that I have to do, or it's something I don't have to do, I don't want to do, in which case you can scrap it entirely. So really question your shoulds. Something else that I also learned at Procter & Gamble and with, I think, a time management, time effectiveness course was to put something onto a someday maybe list. And I love this. You just put it on the someday maybe. You've taken it, you've done a brain dump. You've taken out of your brain and onto paper, or in my case, onto a, a digital list. And you know what? You'll get to it when you have time. Let's be honest, we're never going to get there. But at least it's there now and then you can skim through and maybe there's something that you do want to prioritise, but you feel like it's on there, but it's not something that should be on my today to-do list because it's really not a priority. 
And if you look very critically on your list, you'll find so many things that you think you should do. And, you know, oh my gosh, I've got so many things on my today list in Asana. And actually, I've realised now that, you know what, this could be a, an upcoming, this could be a tomorrow, next week, or in fact, could be a maybe someday um, and, and doesn't have to happen at all. Now, something else I've recommended before is to audit where you're spending your time right now. So use a tool like Toggle, T-O-G-G-L, Toggle, to actually look at, you know, no judgment, just look at where you're spending your time today. And just the act of tracking your time will show you that actually you're doing less important work than you thought. Um, maybe you're spending your time on things that aren't priorities at all um, and will really help you again to question, like, what um, is this actually effective? Am I actually achieving what I think I want to achieve? As I say to my clients, if everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. So if you say everything is a top one, everything has to be done, then, you know, that doesn't help you at all because you have to start somewhere. You need to know what is the biggest priority. Something, and I'll admit this, um, that happened to me when I first started outsourcing the sort of admin, social media, blog scheduling and so on to the freelancer a few years ago, suddenly my calendar was empty. And so I realised I'd been busy but I'd been not actually doing work that was driving my business forward, bringing in an income. So I'd been avoiding, speaking of avoiding, procrastinating, actually doing business development, actually having calls with prospects, um, doing you know things that are going to move my business forwards. And I'd be doing a lot of behind the scenes scheduling and things, which I could pay someone, you know, I don't know, ten pounds an hour, get a free intern or whatever to do. Um, so you know. If you're spending all your time doing this busy work that isn't actually moving your business forward, you might feel like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm doing so many things working my business. But actually none of those things are moving your business forward. And especially if you're doing this alongside a full-time job, then you only have a very small number of hours in the week. And if you're spending a lot of that on this busy work, revising your strategy over and over, you know, tweaking your website, copy, whatever it is, researching and not actually getting anywhere, then, you know, that's something to really think about. Okay, number three is simplicity, and simplicity is my theme for the year. So really, and this is linked to the to-do list, but even in a bigger, big picture frame, I suppose, really think about what is actually important. So what is your one goal for 2020? Um, I did a new template for our Business Accelerator program this year, which is looking at um, our annual planning goals and our quarterly and one of the things on there is the one thing I will do that will make the biggest difference. So what's the one thing that's going to make the biggest difference this year, this quarter, this month, this week, today? And if you could single-mindedly do that one thing, that's going to be incredibly powerful. Um, there are lots of books on this. There's one called Essentialism. Um, there's one called The One Thing. There is a Chrome extension you can put into your um, web browser called... Momentum, I believe. <laughs> Momentum. It's a free plugin and it just asks you, it says every day, good morning, Anna, what's your priority for today? And it's so simple. One thing, if I just get one thing done today, um, really powerful. Another one is Eat the Frog, um, which is a book which is all around sort of doing the hardest thing, the biggest, most disgusting, problematic thing, first thing, um, which is sort of a similar related topic. Um, but really simplicity, if you really strip it back, and this does require taking a step back and looking at everything you think you should do again, really look at which of these things is actually a priority. What do I actually have to do here? Um, especially, you know, last year I had a baby, so I had to look at, okay, what's the minimum I could do to maintain my branding presence and income and so on um, without stressing myself out, you know, would be as present as possible with my new young family and um, but still get things done and I can't tell you how revolutionary this has been now having a young child as well um you know to really focus the mind because you have so um few hours to yourself in the day and in the week so you have to damn well make sure that those hours you do have um you're really doing the things that make a difference so that's really powerful simplicity strip away all the stuff the noise the fluff and by the way, this is really difficult to do for yourself. Um, if you're new in business and you know you're not sure on what you should be focusing those few hours on, um, then do get in touch. You can book a free call as ever at onestepoutside.com forward slash free consultation, onestepoutside.com forward slash free consultation. Um, and we'll have a free 30 minute call. We'll talk through your situation and we'll talk about, you know, what your priorities, what my recommendation would be for where you should focus. And of course, how I can support you with that as well. Um, but don't suffer in silence and um, stop doing all this busy work work you know and make sure that you know what your priorities are for whatever stage of business you're at and whatever your goals are now number four is a reminder that doing nothing is doing something 
this is something that's come up in my group chat, uh, group program a few weeks ago. Um, a couple of my clients actually mentioned this, um, that it's, you know, if you leave your calendar blank, then things will fill it up and you'll, you'll think, oh yeah, there's nothing happening on Friday. Yep, sure, my mother-in-law can come over. Yep, sure, we can do this. Yeah, I can do that. I can have a call and so on. Suddenly before you know it, that blank space, that doing nothing, that rest is full up. Um, so doing nothing is an activity just as much as other things in your life and business. It could be Netflix, reading a book, going for a walk, having a bath, um, but it's important that you're doing it for your own sake or for its own sake. So don't read a book because you've set yourself a 52 book challenge for 2020, but because you want to read it. Um, and this is really important for your own enjoyment, happiness and fulfillment, but also for your productivity and uh, business success. You know, again, I've mentioned being ill. If you have the migraine, if you have the flu, much better to rest and recover than force yourself to keep going. And um, even if you're just super tired, I've learned that, you know, I can sit at my computer, stare at my computer for three, four hours and try to do work when I'm knackered. Or as I did yesterday, in fact, I can just take a step back and spend some time maybe tidying my room or doing the laundry, going for walks, spending time with my family, even having a bit of rest on the sofa. And then I'll come back to work later and be much more productive and have much more energy and get a better result than if I'm forcing myself through it. Now, this is not to say that you should only relax when you're ill or you're really tired, because again, doing nothing is doing something. Having that space, um, a bit of silence, a bit of time for yourself is so important for your own well-being, for the well-being of your family and for the success of your business. So block your calendar. Don't leave it blank. It can be relaxation time. It can be me time. It can be whatever you want to call it, <laughs> but it is an activity and you need to keep that appointment as sacred as if it was an appointment with someone else. And then finally, just to wrap up, being present. So let's come back to this busyness epidemic. Don't just say I'm busy. Take a breath, check in with how you're feeling. Now, maybe people asking you how you're doing aren't interested in a detailed um analysis of how you're actually doing depending on how well you know this person but I would encourage you I'd challenge you to come up with a more interesting answer next time so if someone asks you how you're doing rather than I'm fine which is the classic or I'm so busy what could you say instead actually I'm really enjoying some time off right now because I worked really hard in January and now I'm reaping the benefits or you know what, I've recently left my job, so now I'm taking some time to explore what I want to do. Now, completely up to you again how much you share, and it's not necessarily something you want to share with everybody. Um, but again, have a think about what you do want to share and maybe don't resort to latch on to that classic, I'm busy. Because if we're constantly saying that to other people and to ourselves, that's something that we're labelling ourselves with, it's something we're internalising and holding on to as something we really need. If we can begin to practice saying to ourselves and saying to other people, um, you know, that the import actually it's really important right now that I'm I'm slowing things down, I'm consolidating things in my business at the moment. I'm working on this exciting project. I've started volunteering here, there and everywhere. We're planning a weekend away at the weekend, whatever you want to share, but just challenging you to share something other than I'm so busy. But I think to come back to the beginning, the most important piece is really to spend some time reflecting on why am I always clinging on to this being busy? What is it that frantically ticking things off my list is actually bringing me um, what is it that that's doing for me is it a form of procrastination am I avoiding something difficult painful whatever it might be um, when I don't do that how am I feeling and how can I sort of introduce that new habit of actually doing nothing rather than always be doing something and again doing nothing is doing something it will feel strange at the beginning um, if you're anything like me, when you first go on holiday, the first few days, I just feel like, oh, what's going on? I can't do this. But I am very good at after a few days relaxing into it. Um, so if you do allow yourself, you know, block some time in your calendar to have a proper lunch break, have a proper coffee break, um, you know, try to increase the stretch of time when you're so-called doing nothing. Um, in addition to all these things we've said about reviewing your to-do list and questioning the shoulds and so on, and embracing simplicity, um, if you can try to begin to take longer time for yourself and so on, you will find that that becomes more of a habit. And creating those habits is something we'll be looking at next week. Um, but, you know, I, I, a few different thoughts there. I think something that maybe requires a bit more um, analysis and reflection. I'd love to hear from you as ever. If you have any comments on this, then get in touch at podcast at, uh, podcast at onestepoutside.com, podcast at onestepoutside.com. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions on this or anything I can dig into further confidentially, of course, um, if you want to ask something, then by all means, get in touch. Hope you found that interesting. Hope you can, together with me, start to 
overcome this busyness epidemic and I look forward to seeing you back here next week. Bye for now. Have you set yourself ambitious goals for your business and you now recognize that you'll need mentoring from someone who's been there, done that and can guide you to focus on the right priorities? I can help you clarify your vision and get the foundations in place for long-term success. Get clear on your messaging and build a strong brand proposition and improve your work-life balance as you achieve your business goals without sacrificing your health and relationships to do so. Apply for a free consultation at onestepoutside.com forward slash free consultation. I look forward to hearing about your goals.